Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to our service today. It's the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. And if you've looked at your bulletin for you who are here with us today, the idea of being called and of being elected and then sent out, chosen by the Lord and sent out by Him, are the themes that are reflected in our lessons for this morning. Today we follow the order of word and sacrament. You'll find that on page 26 in the front part of the hymn note. And that service will begin with the singing of our opening hymn. We sing hymn number 241, 241 out of the Christian worship hymn note. Hallelujah, let praises ring. And what you might look for in the hymns today or the prayers or the readings is that idea of chosen or called, elected, chosen. We sing 241, Hallelujah, let praises ring.
Welcome again, if you would follow me in our service this morning of service of word and sacrament. You'll find that on page 26 in the front part of the hymn note. And again, this morning, the shorter portions of this will join uh, in speaking. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and to worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, Christ have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise as we join in the singing, O Lord, our Lord. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy and to bring forth fruits in faith and hope and love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. And we now turn our attention to the scripture lessons today, appointed for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. For you who are with us today and online, you can find them posted there. For those here, you'll find them printed on the back side of your bulletin if you care to follow along. And our lessons today, again, they center around the thoughts of chosen, called, and then sent by our Lord. 
Our first lesson is from the book of Amos, the Old Testament book, chapter 7, verses 10 to 15. Uh, Amos is called to be God's prophet to Israel. You'll hear of another man in this lesson today, Amaziah, who was a priest in a place called Bethel, a little bit to the north of Jerusalem. He was not a very good priest, and he did not like what Amos had to come and say, that the Lord had sent him to tell his people Israel. But Amos, again, emphasizes that it was not his own words, but it was the words of the Lord that he brought, because Amos was nothing special as he looked at himself in his life. We read in Amos chapter 7. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to endure all of his words. This is what Amos says. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will certainly go into exile away from its own soil. Then Amaziah said to Amos, You seer, get out of here. Flee to the land of Judah. You may eat food and prophesy there, but you must never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the sanctuary of the king and the national temple. Then Amos responded to Amaziah, I was not a prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet. Rather, I was a sheep breeder, and I took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending flocks, and the Lord said to me, Go. Prophesy to my people Israel. Here ends the word of our Lord from the Old Testament lesson. Our epistle lesson today is recorded in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter beginning at verse 13 and reading to 14. This is also the sermon text for today, and actually what I'm going to do at this time is I'm just going to read the opening verses of this, and you'll understand why later. We read in Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He did this when he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, so that we would be holy and blameless in his sight. So far the reading of our epistle lesson this morning. And in response to our first two lessons, we join in the singing of hymn 380, in the 380. Again, look for that idea of choosing or electing by the Lord. Lord, tis not that I did choose you.
Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. Our Gospel lesson today is recorded in the book of Mark, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 7. Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two. He gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their money belts. They were to put on sandals, but not to wear two coats. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that area. Any place that will not receive you or listen to you as you leave there, shake off the dust that is under your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They also drove out many demons. They anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated as we continue with the singing of our sermon hymn, our next hymn for today. That is hymn number 548. Hymn 548 in Christian worship. O Lord, in prayer you spend the night.
Grace be yours and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning we look at the epistle lesson for the day, reading in Ephesians chapter 1. It contains a very important doctrine that we don't often get the opportunity to talk about, and that is called the doctrine of election. Paul writes in Ephesians 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He did this when he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, so that we would be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. He did this in accordance with the good purposes of his will and for the praise of his glorious grace, which he has graciously given us in the one he loves. In him we also have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in keeping with the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. He made known to us the mystery of his will, in keeping with his good purpose, which he planned in Christ. This was to be carried out when the time had fully come, in order to bring all things together in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have also obtained an inheritance, because we were predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in keeping with the purpose of his will. He did this so that his glory would be praised as a result of us who were the first to hope in Christ. In him, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and in him, when you also believed, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, he is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of God's own possession, so that his glory would be praised. Christ Jesus, their fellow redeemed and our Lord. Did you catch all of that? That's what I call a mouthful. A mouthful of words. And it's not just because there were so many complex thoughts in there. But in the Greek text, that's all one sentence. Just one sentence. Our translations break, break that down into 10 or 11 or 12 sentences, but in Greek it's one long sentence made up of 203 words. I counted them all. Boy, if I had written a paper when I was in school that was 203 words long, I think my English prop would have flunked me. We don't do that in English. It's too hard to follow all of that. But there is a very special reason why the Holy Spirit had Paul write it that way. You see, every thought in that long sentence, that was just one long sentence, every thought hangs on the other and the next thought. They mesh into one unit, a song of praise to God for his astounding grace to us. It begins with this teaching that's known as the doctrine of election, sometimes also referred to as predestination. <coughs> now to many, the doctrine of election is difficult, but it is not as complicated as people make it out to be. And it is not given to worry or to distress us. It is actually given for the purpose of great comfort and assurance that as we cling to Christ in our faith, we are his in time and for all eternity. Yet ironically, people are afraid to approach this doctrine or to teach it. I remember one time at, this, at school, our seminary professor told us the story of a student who came to him after that professor had taught this doctrine of election in class. And the student said something like this, I feel that I now understand it much better than I had before, but I still am going to avoid it, and I'm never going to teach it to children. That's probably the way a lot of people feel about this. They're afraid because they think people will draw all kinds of wrong conclusions from it, which they do. That's sad. 
because this teaching is actually very simple and it is given only for our comfort. It's only difficult if you don't stick to what God has said in regards to it. And it's only frightening to those who say things that God never said. And if you refuse to study this, you actually rob yourself of one of the greatest gospel treasures that God has given to his church. You just have to start at the right spot, at the right place. And then you will sing for joy like Paul does when he says, praise God. Praise him from eternity to eternity. You have to start at the right place. So Paul writes, God has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Now, if you're going to benefit from this teaching on election, you must first know that Christ has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in Christ. That's important, and that's the right place to start. It begins with God's eye view of things, not man's eye view. God has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Now, what are those blessings? God loves you. If you want to know that God loves you, remember that God says he loved the world. Jesus died for you. If you want to know that he died for you, Go to those places where it says he died for all. He redeemed you to himself. If you want to know if he did, recall that he gave his life as a ransom for all. He forgives you. If you want to be sure that he takes away your sin, Remember that the Bible calls him the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and proclaims that he has reconciled the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. God wants you in heaven. If you want to know if God wants you in heaven, simply remember that God wants all people to be saved. In countless ways, we can go on. The Bible tells you that God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Like Paul said, he has lavished the riches of his grace upon you. It's guaranteed to you. He says it's sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the down payment of our inheritance. Now in ancient times, the seal, which was much often upon the ring of the king. That showed ownership. It told others, this is mine. When the Holy Spirit comes to you and gives you faith to say, Jesus died for me, the Spirit is like a stamp on the cover of your heart telling you, you are his. You are mine. That's great comfort. You couldn't say that. You could not say Jesus is my Savior without the Holy Spirit. And in that, he has sealed himself to you. He's also the evidence to you of a down payment, Paul writes. Now, the purpose of a down payment on a car or a house or whatever it might be is an indication that there is more that is to come. Knowing that Jesus is your Savior is an assurance to you that many more blessings of God are going to follow. Praise God, Paul says. In faith you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And that's the right place to start when you talk about this doctrine of election. By faith, all are yours. So we know that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He has made known to us the mystery of his will, Paul says. That means the hidden things of salvation that we would never have known if the Holy Spirit had not revealed it to us. He's revealed it to us in his word 
and he guides us to the understanding of that as he sends us that Holy Spirit so that we simply know that Christ is our Savior who has died for our sin and God forgives us through him. That you must know before you can benefit from this doctrine. Start there. When Martin Luther was a monk at the monastery, he also was greatly troubled in his early <clears throat> years by this doctrine of election. He worried about it day and night that he was not a part of it. One day he told that to the head of the monastery. He told him about his fears. <clears throat> And the head of the monastery, Dr. Stelpitz, advised, Brother Martin, first find yourself in the wounds of Christ, and then you can be sure of your election. Now that is great advice, dear friends. Find yourself in the wounds of Christ. Luther says he never forgot that. Find yourself in the wounds of Christ. Christ washed in his blood for that blood of Jesus Christ God's son cleanses from all sin and you have to begin there at the right place with all the blessings that are now yours to Christ these things are certain because God has promised them start there and you will see that this doctrine is another great blessing in which you can find value and comfort for your faith. Now, when you know that you have been redeemed through Christ, and then you begin to look around at the world, you see that there are so many who do not know the Savior or believe in Him. So you might begin to ask yourself, why is it that I'm a Christian? Why is it that I was baptized, that I heard the gospel, that I believed it? Sometimes our sinful heart, which Satan is so good at manipulating, tries to tell us that we are Christians because we are smarter than others, or we're better than others, or we're not quite as stubborn in resisting God as others are. But that is really corrected by the doctrine of election, which tells us how good that God has been to us in eternity. God to you. It's not you to God. God in his grace, not you, has brought this about in your life. Paul writes, He chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the good purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace which he has graciously given us. Did you know the whole emphasis there is continually repeated? He, 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 his, his, him, him, he. He graciously gave us to us. He did how good God has been to you long before the world was ever created. Now oh, just think about that. Long before creation. Too often men speak as though they have brought this about. As though it were a matter of their own doing or thinking. You know, I made my decision for Christ. Or I chose Christ as if the power to do that could actually lie in us who by nature are dead in our sin. If you're dead, you're dead. How can you choose? How can you decide for Christ? But Jesus told his disciples, you did not choose me. I chose you. Likewise, think of Amos in the Old Testament lesson today. His choosing was God's doing. Amos wrote, the Lord took me from tending the flock and said, go prophesy to my people Israel. And God told the Old Testament people at the time of Moses, as they're wandering in the desert, the Lord your God chose you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not see, set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than others, for you were the fewest of all. 
but it was because the Lord loved you. We are God's children, not because we made a decision for God, but because God made a decision for us. God made you his own, not because you were better than others, not because you did more good things than others, not because you were prettier or kinder or gentlier or smarter or nicer, not because you didn't reject him as badly as others reject him. It was grace that did it. The Bible says, God saved us and called us with a holy calling, not on account of our works, but on account of his own purpose and grace given us in Christ before the beginning of time. God chose you. God predetermined you to be his child. He made his saving will known to you. He brought you to himself in Christ. He gave you his Holy Spirit to say, Jesus died for my sins. He guarantees that more will be coming to you. He gives you an internal, eternal inheritance. Why? Simply to his praise and glory. Because he wanted it. How eternally good he has been to all who believe in Christ. He did it all long before the world was created. And humanly speaking, I don't get it. I don't get it with my human reason. But this is what he has declared. And that's astounding. What an inexpressibly hot love he has. Elected from eternity to eternity. Praise God. What comfort and assurance that gives. All before everything was made. He said it. Believe it. So rejoice in your status before him. And should you ever become discouraged or depressed or afraid, remember by grace in Christ, God has elected you from eternity to eternity to be his. Don't look at others. You look at Christ, and you find yourself in the wounds of Christ, because God won't let those who do <coughs> fall. Praise God, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. God grant that to us in our faith for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we now unite with all Christians in confessing our faith. This morning we do that in the words of the Nicene Creed. You will find that on page 31 in the front part of the hymnal. Page 31. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, a one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, came down from heaven, was a garment of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we now worship our Lord in bringing our offerings to We ask you to please rise as we continue in the order of service of word and sacrament. We continue on page 32 with the responsive prayer of the church. And we ask the congregation to please read the responses that you find printed in the bold print for you. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood, which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food, increase our trust in Christ, and our love for one another. <laughs> Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need and to help them with deeds of kindness. Dear Father, in your tender love, you have given great and precious promises to your children through this doctrine of election. Preserve us from the doubts that would assail us and increase our faith so that we always find ourselves in the wounds of Christ. For as we are found there and confess him as our savior, we are yours for time and eternity. When life puzzles or disturbs us, teach us to fix our eyes on Jesus and to stand firm in the assurance of his promises to uphold and deliver us from all evil. And now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith, and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to join in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we now continue with the order of Holy Communion on page 33. 
And once again, the shorter responses we will just speak for today, and the longer canticles will join in singing together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the one of hosts. The Testament in my blood, which is poured out for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Oh Christ, man. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of your sins. And now may this is true body and blood and given and shed for the forgiveness of all sins, strengthen you and confirm you in that true faith to life everlasting. 
depart in peace. Amen. Take a beat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of your sins. Now may this is true body and blood and given and shed for the forgiveness of all sins. Strengthen you and confirm you in that true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of Christ, shed for the remission of your sins. Mm -hmm. And now may this is true body and blood be given and shed for the forgiveness of all sins. Strengthen you and confirm you in that true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of your sins. And now may this his true body and blood be given and shed for the forgiveness of all sins, strengthen you and confirm you with that true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat. 
This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take and drink. This is his true blood shed for the remission of your sins. <clears throat> and now may this is true body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of all sins. Strengthen you and confirm you in that true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. rise as we return in the service of word and sacrament to page 36 and join in the third of the song of thanksgiving thank the lord that has singing his praise tell everyone of what he has done let all see the lord rejoice heaven proudly bear That the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again. And that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve our Lord in gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we join in the singing of our final hymn, 318, sent forth by God's blessings. Hymn 318.
to our service today and pray that you've been strengthened in your faith by God's word. For you who are with us online, we'll be here again next week at this time. And uh, especially for our members today, perhaps you noticed the uh, announcement in there. Uh, because we're missing some of our uh, uh, leaders today and some of our people, we're, we're going to postpone the uh, voters meeting and uh, women working for Christ meeting and probably again in two weeks uh, so that we have everybody here that can, that can help with that. Uh, then we invite you to remain following our service for a time of fellowship and refreshments and then for our Bible study hour. Thank you.